Alright guys, well, I think it is a lovely spring night here in the end times, <coughs> here on Monday, April 8th, it is fucking 9.30 at night, I am dealing with this unfucking believable motherfucking bullshit. Oh, I'm sure you guys want to hear about my real estate investment problems. I have enough motherfucking problems on my li in, in my fucking life to deal with. 9.30 at fucking night. Haven't even uh, got dinner uh, on yet. Dealing with this goddamn fucking bullshit. And uh, here it is 9.30. And I said, motherfucker, uh, I, I gotta deal with, 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 with this fat ass motherfucker Donald Trump now. I need to be sitting here watching a goddamn Netflix comedy or a fucking porno film, uh, drinking a goddamn margarita, and instead of looking at this fat fuck. Jesus. So, uh, I don't know how long this one's going to be. I'm gonna, just going to pick out uh, a, a, a few of them. You know, I always like to start these with a Donald Trump quote, and uh, so hard to choose from every week, but this is my Donald Trump quote of the week. Heard that uh, this was in Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, talking to his clueless fucking moron Trump tard voters. Quote, if, if your constitutional rights have been violated, we will defend you. <laughs> and if you have illegal aliens invading your home, we will deport you. <laughs> there you go. I wish I had some fucking illegal aliens invading my goddamn home. I, I can't remember the last time I saw a fucking illegal alien. Uh, my God, uh, it, 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 illegal aliens used to be a fucking dime a dozen. What the fuck would I give to see a fucking illegal alien around here? Do some goddamn work. Can't find a fucking Mexican in Florida anymore. So, DeSantis apparently has shipped all the fucking Mexicans up to New York, but I can't find a fucking Mexican in New York either. But anyway, I'm not sure that was the subject of my rant. But really, guys, I, I can almost make this uh, my whole rant. You know, I, I've always been, been a fan of good old Dan Rather. They, you, you know, uh, an old-timey newsman uh, back when journalists uh, used to do their fucking job uh, and, and instead of going around sucking Donald Trump's dick, sucking Joe Biden's dick, whatever the fuck, uh, the, the, these goddamn little pussies calling themselves journalists uh, now spreading all of this goddamn shit. Uh, if they're not spreading these right-wing conspiracy fucking bullshit over there on Fox News, they're on the other side spouting out all of this motherfucking bright green lied bullshit to, to these little limp dick clueless fucking morons. Bring back the goddamn Dan Rathers. What the fuck ever happened to Dan Rather? I didn't even know the dude was still alive. But, but really, guys... Uh, Dan Rather has gotten to the heart uh, of why I despise Donald fucking Trump. It's not that difficult, okay? And it's not because I've got Joe Biden's dick in my mouth. I despise Joe Biden too, okay? 
the fucking compared to Donald Trump, <coughs> Joe Biden is Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, take it around, take it away, Dan Rather. Okay, this is Dan Rather on why he despises the ground Donald fucking Trump walks on. Quote, a few people have asked why I vehemently oppose Trump. Let me make this perfectly clear. <clears throat> well, where were we? It is not about politics. I have voted for both parties. It is about me as a patriot rejecting a cheating, lying, racist, treasonous, fascist, and vile man who attacks the free press and wants to lead the country I love. It's really that simple. Okay, Joe Biden is a corporate whore, political hack, He's just one of the last fucking turds squeezed out of the fucking asshole uh, of the U.S. political system. But Joe Biden, as much as I don't care for that senile old fuck, Joe Biden is not a cheating, lying, racist, treasonous, fascist, vile man who attracts the, the free press. Okay, I've already read this long, uh, part one of this long essay, two-part essay from this fellow on Medium.com, Steve Jenko, called Morons at the Gate, where he's going on and on about morons. Uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, actually, it's two parts with an addendum now. Uh, but we're just going to read a, a little bit about morons that specifically involves Donald Trump, uh, you know, talking about the, the, these goddamn uh, right-wing conspiracy theories that preceded Donald Trump. Before Donald Trump even appeared on the scene, uh, and thus was born the Republican Party's abandonment of truth as a value to which it aspired, or as a criterion against which it, it would evaluate anything it communicated to its followers. But Donald Trump, the most prolific and pathological liar ever, to grace the American political stage was one step ahead of the party. Trump unleashed such a torrent of lies, conspiracies, conspiracies and attention-grabbing insults that he quickly won over the gullible and poorly educated Republican base. Vanquish, vanquishing more than a dozen establishment Republicans with ease, he captured the no nomination and then, with a few vital assists from allies like Comey and Putin, the presidency itself. To the RNC, this looked like a winning strategy until it didn't. The problem, of course, was Trump himself. Party leaders began to suspect they had made a bad bet on Trump. They knew he was a serial liar and a sexual predator. But their voters did not seem to mind. So, neither did they. But <coughs> they quickly discovered once Trump was in office for a few weeks, that he was also a moron, and not just any moron, but a spiteful, 
vengeful, vindictive, corrupt, and astonishingly self-destructive moron. But his base loved him. So the party fell in line. <laughs> the Trump administration quickly devolved into a tragedy wrapped in a comedy wrapped in a morality tale. Uh, anyway, this uh, goes on and on. The lies turned into crimes. Crimes were turning into indictments. And the non-moron portion of the voting public was apparently beginning to notice, if not in their answers to polling questions and in how they were starting to vote. <coughs> anyway, uh, this, this goes on and on that uh, the moron-in-chief, uh, Donald Trump, uh, is just a, a, you know, the top of the pyramid of the fucking uh, mountain of morons who would vote for this motherfucker. What did Dan Rather call this man again? Why anybody uh, on this planet would vote for this cheating, lying, racist, treasonous, fascist, and vile man. Uh, but uh, <coughs> it's getting ready to happen again. So what are those <coughs> lefties over at the Guardian whining about here today? Trump's bizarre, vindictive incoherence has to be heard in full to be believed. And I, I just can't, uh, I, I just can't take it. Uh, watching a Trump speech in full better shows what it's like inside his head. A smorgasbord of falsehoods personal and professional vendettas, frequent comparisons to other famous people, you know, such as Jesus, a couple of handfuls of simple policy ideas, and a lot of non-sequiturs that veer into barely intelligible stories. Uh, but anyway, Usually towards the end of his rambling monologues, he might actually mention some of his policies he hopes to bring about in his second term. Here is instituting the death penalty for drug dealers. Huh. Well, Guys, I, I, I hate to say, I, I don't know about, there, there's drug dealers and then there's drug dealers. But uh, anybody uh, who, uh, a champion of capital punishment, who wants to put a lot more fucking crimes uh, on the capital punishment list, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, don't get me going. How about the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act? Uh, if China or any other country makes us pay 100% or 200% tariff, which they do, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100% or 200%. Huh. I'm, uh, I'm beginning to warm to this guy. I don't know what the word indemnifying means, so indemnifying all police officers and law enforcement officials. 
I think basically that means giving them a license to kill which they already have. Uh, so that's kind of uh, redundant. Okay. How about rebuilding cities and taking over Washington, D.C., where he said in a recent speech, there are, quote, beautiful columns put together, quote, through force of will because there were no caterpillar tractors, and now those columns have graffiti on them. Rebuilding cities, I don't know. Uh, huh. Issuing an executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content. I am proud to say I have no fucking clue what critical race theory is. No fucking clue what it is. But, uh, hey, uh, I really don't want my tax dollars uh, going uh, to make tranny bathrooms. Hmm. And one more. Moving to one-day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. Hmm. Wow. You go out on election day with your voter ID and you use a paper ballot. Hmm. Sancho, uh, I don't know. Uh, hmm. Well, we'll just move on. Trump's second term blueprint, just like Joe Biden's first term blueprint, would take a wrecking ball to public lands. So uh, th this is this no shit Sherlock story uh, 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 about how Donald Trump, a vote for Donald Trump, is a vo is a vote for the oil and gas industry. That if uh, that obviously, if Donald Trump uh, gets in the White House, which he will. Uh, our public lands, whatever's left of them, will be completely handed over to the oil and gas industry. That uh, the, the oil and gas industry and the livestock industry uh, will, will be d d d just given complete free reign over our joke public lands. Uh, th th this is a no-shit Sherlock story that uh, Donald Trump will rape and pillage our public lands. Of course, what this uh, story... Where is it? I have managed to lose my glasses here. Uh, what little limp dick lefty rag is this out of? Oh, well, no shit. Huff Post. Of course, you're not going to see. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, arguing one bit with, with, with anything in this story from the little limp dick lefties over at Huff Post uh, talking about uh, that Donald Trump. It would just give, uh, you, you know, an open pass 
to the oil and gas industry. And, and, and I have to admit, uh, I, I am absolutely shocked that HuffPost admitted here that under Joe Biden, that Joe Biden has pumped more fossil fuels out of the ground under his administration than Donald Trump ever did in his wildest wet dream. Okay, now my guess is most of that was done on private land. Uh, I would have to look up those statistics. And then, of course, what you are not going to read in HuffPost is that Joe Biden has given, what is it, what is it, is it 17 million acres or 22 million acres uh, of our public lands over to these uh, bullshit uh, green energy uh, outfits, the, 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 these fucking lithium mines, the whole bit. Uh, my guess is that uh, th 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 this whole fucking uh, bright green lie uh, uh, under that Joe Biden is pushing uh, will actually have a harder time getting off the ground under Donald Trump. That, uh, that, that Joe Biden is every bit as big a threat to, to our public lands as Donald Trump. So if, if, if anybody thinks uh, that Donald Trump uh, is cornering the market on uh, destroying our public lands, pull your head out of your ass. They're all a bunch of corporate whores. Now this one is a long one from LA Times and I just don't have the energy for it, but it is an interesting read. Trump turns his trials into a soapbox. Does he know he is channeling Hitler? When Adolf Hitler was convicted of treason for leading an armed insurrection against Germany's democratically elected government, he discovered something remarkable. <clears throat> Courtrooms can make excellent soap boxes for political grandstanding. In real time, 100 years later, we have been watching another political leader, former president and future president, Donald Trump, do the same. The echoes are uncanny and disturbing. And uh, this guy, whoever this is, Timothy Ryback. Uh, don't know who Timothy Ryback. Uh, wh what he does is he goes through uh, Adolf Hitler's uh, criminal trials. You know, Hitler uh, was in and out of prison. Uh, before, you know, he, all, all those fucking uh, Hitler make Germany great again morons uh, put him in at the top of the heap. And uh, as it points out, that, that Hitler took full advantage of this. That, uh, you know, he used uh, the Germany's criminal justice system to his advantage to, you know, to play the victim card and, and convince all of these clueless fucking moron right-wing Nazis uh, to put him in power. And it really is uncanny and disturbing. Uh, you can find that article on uh, LA Times. Uh, but anyway, guys, I've had enough of this fat fuck. I I've had enough of this fat fuck for the rest of my fucking life. But I sure as hell ha ha have had enough of this fat fuck for the next week. <laughs> oh.
so I can finally uh, goddamn relax here at 10 o'clock on fucking Monday night dealing with this goddamn bullshit that, that, that fucking cropped up out of nowhere today. Uh, the life of being a Florida real estate investor. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. And the little dog is not feeling well either today. <laughs>